जय हिंद चिल्ड्रेन आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू इन टू डीज लाइव क्लास ऑफ बायोलॉजी चिल्ड्रेन वी आर डिस्कसिंग द चैप्टर न्यूट्रिशन इन एनिमल्स in this chapter i have explained you the different processes of nutrition like the first one we have explained about the ingestion then digestion of food absorption of food and assimilation of the digested food now today we will discuss the rest topic of the chapter that is ingestion i am going to share now my screen so with the help of the slides i am going to start the today's topic digestion children not all the food you eat is digested and absorbed the food that cannot be digested moves from the small intestine into a wide tube called the large intestine here most of the water present in the waste is absorbed and the waste food which is now almost solid is stored in the last part of the large intestine which is called the rectum and it is then passed out of the body through the anus now then come to the topic digestion the last step of nutrition process ejection means that the removal of the waste from the body so that is simply known as ejection and here i am going to explain you in detail about the process of ejection now children remember that in previous class i have drawn the diagram of digestive system of human so again i am going to draw the same diagram to in the process of digestion Children, so, this is after the mouth. The food passes in food pipe, that is esophagus. The next one. Stomach. after the stomach this long winding tube like structure is small intestine and this small intestine is get connected to a thick tube which is shorter than its small intestine and this is the
लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन द लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन इज गोइंग टू एंड एट द मस्कुलर बैग लाइक स्ट्रक्चर विच इज नोन एज रेक्टम एंड दिस रेक्टम इज गोइंग टू ओपन इन ओपनिंग दिस ओपनिंग इज नोन एज एन एस So this, these are the different parts of our elementary canal. As we have explained, when the food enters in the mouth, it passes through the food pipe and comes in the stomach. Here, the partial digestion takes place. Again, it moves in the small intestine, and with the help of different digestive juices, that complete digestion of food takes place. And after that, the food get absorbed from the wall of small intestine and after the absorption they get utilized to produce energy and other purpose in the body now the undigested part the waste part of the food along with excess water enters from small intestine to long intestine and this large intestine absorb the excess water children you must have to make it clear in small intestine the absorption of food take place and in large intestine the absorption of excess water from the food takes place so when the excess water get absorbed from this large intestine so the solid undigested waste food move forward and get collected here at last in the rectum and from the rectum time to time it get removed out thrown out from the body through this opening which is known as ns and this removal is known as ejection simply you can say that ejection is a process in which the solid undigested part of the food get removed out from the ns from our body and the water which was present in digested food is get absorbed in large intestine so this large intestine rectum and anus they all are going to play an important role in the process of digestion now after the digestion the complete process of nutrition in human beings is gets completed and i hope that you understood now i'm going to start the next topic that is ruminants so the ruminants are hooved plant eating animals that digest their food in two steps some examples are cows buffaloes goats sheep and bison they have complicated stomachs consisting of four chambers food that is swallowed goes into the first chamber called the rumen here it is partially digested and is called gut it then goes to the second chamber from where it is returned to the mouth for thorough chewing and this process is called the rumination that is why these animals are called ruminants after chewing the food is swallowed for a second time and then digested further in the remaining chambers it is finally sent to the small intestine where the absorption of the nutrients occurs now we can come to the next topic of the chapter that is ruminants and i hope that you understood these all steps of nutrition process in human beings
ruminates. The term is used for certain kind of animals. As I already told you that the animals like cows, buffaloes, goat, sheep, they all are known as ruminants. The name is given to them because at the time of digestion of food, one more process is going to occur in their digestive system and that is known as rumination of food. And that is why the name is given to this group of animal as ruminants. So let's start about the ruminants. As I have explained you the digestive system of human beings and I have drawn the diagram many times that mouth, then so phagus, then stomach, small intestine, large intestine and all. So here in case of ruminants, the digestive system is somewhat complex. When the food enters through mouth and passes from esophagus and goes to the stomach. So their stomachs are divided in four chambers. As we have the stomach which have only one chamber and the stomach of these animals are having four chambers. And the name of the first chamber of the stomach is rumen. Rumen is the name of first chamber of stomach of these animals. So as the food passes from food pipe and comes to the stomach, here the stomach is divided into four chambers and then small intestine and large intestine. So this is the food pipe. This is the first chamber of the stomach which is known as rumen. This is the second chamber, third chamber and fourth chamber and food passes one by one. So first of all the food enters from mouth and comes in the food pipe and comes in first chamber that is rumen chamber of the stomach. Here the food get partially digested, not completely digested and from the rumen it goes to the second chamber and again from second chamber it comes back to the mouth and by the process of chewing again the chewed food move to the third and then fourth chamber and then passes to the small intestine. So the food is going to move once it enters through the mouth from food pipe goes to the first chamber that is rumen. Here it's get partially digested and that partially digested food in the chamber rumen is known as cud. So, the term cud is used for partially digested food in the chamber rumen and again this partially digested cud comes in the second chamber again back in the mouth and they get chewed properly and here the chewing get completes and now it moves to the third and fourth chamber and the digestion process gets complete here. And then the digested food passes to the small intestine. And as the name of this chamber is human, 
This process is known as rumination. So children, you can say that the rumination is a process in which the partially digested food that is cut again get chewed, again comes back in the mouth and get chewed completely and move back in the next chamber of the stomach. So this process is known as rumination and that is why these animals are known as ruminants. So children, I hope that you understood the topic ruminants. Which kind of animals are known as ruminants? The animals like cows, buffaloes, goats, sheep, etc. Why they are termed as ruminants? So the simple reason is there. They have the rumination process. And the rumination process is chewing again the partially digested food that comes back from stomach, second chamber of stomach to the mouth and again moves back. So this process is known as rumination and that is why they are known as ruminants. And this partially digested food stored in first chamber. So the name of that first chamber is rumen. So the rumination terms comes from the chamber rumen. That is the first chamber of stomach of these animals. So I hope that you understood about the process of digestion in ruminants in these animals. Then after this topic, the chapter is going to over but we have some more topic in the chapter like a topic is there in the book the story of the stomach with the hole. So, I am going to discuss this topic of the chapter also, the story of the stomach with a hole. How the working of the stomach was discovered makes an interesting story. On 6 June 1822, a man called Alex St. Martin was accidentally shot in the stomach. He was treated by an American doctor, William Beaumont. Martin survived but with a hole in his stomach that never completely healed. Dr. Beaumont recognized this as a unique opportunity to observe digestive processes. He began to perform experiments on digestion using Martin's stomach. The experiments were mainly conducted by insert, inserting a piece of food tied to a string through the hole into Martin's stomach. Every few hours, Dr. Bauman would remove the food and observe how well it had been digested. He observed that the food was being churned in the stomach. Dr. Baumont also extracted a sample of gastric juice from Martin's stomach for analysis. He used it to digest bits of food in cups. This led to the important discovery that the stomach juices digest the food into nutrients the body can use. In other words, digestion was primarily a chemical process and not a mechanical process. So, then the topic is here, the story of the stomach with the hole.
this interesting fact is given in your chapter the story of the stomach with a hole children simply in this story it is given that how the function of his stomach was discovered first time as the people don't know about the different digestive juices their function how they act and how they convert the different components of the food so this story is related to that there was a person martin who get shot accidentally in his stomach and get treated by a doctor baumann who treated him but there was a hole left in the stomach after the treatment and that hole not get healed up and now that doctor baumann take that hole in the patient as a opportunity to discover to know to learn the function of the stomach and the function of the digestive juices the process of the digestion so that doctor have conducted number of experiments on that hole as he has given the food which are tied with a string and when the food passes from mouth and comes in the stomach so the digestion get start because certain digestive juices get added and again that food comes out from the hole taken out from the hole so he was able to know that the components which get added in the food which help in digestion and second thing the substance which get added the juice which get added he get collected that juice and mixed it in a bit of food in cup and observe that that food is going to digest that food is going to break down from complex to simple form then he has given his idea that the digestive juices are going to secrete in stomach which are responsible for digestion of food and the overall function of the digestion get explained by him later so in this story about the function of stomach and the digestive juices are explained to you so the mr baumann a doctor who has given his opinion about the function of digestive juices with the help of his patient who have a whole stomach now children along with these all topics which i have explained in the chapter we have number of small facts related to the chapter given in your book so you have to go through those facts also because it's very interesting and important some of the facts i'm going to also explain to you like the fact which is given in your book on the page number 19 during digestion minerals and vitamins do not need to be changed the cells are able to absorb them as they are we have explained that the digestion of component of food so mainly the three components of food need to digest from complex to simple that is fat second one starch and third one protein because these are the components if they will not get digested if they will not get break down into simple form so our body will not absorb it and not utilize it so that is why their digestion is necessary and except these three nutrients these three components the two components are also there in our food that is minerals and the vitamins so they are already in simple form and that is why their digestion is not required and they not get broken down from in another form so it's given here in the fact that vitamins and the minerals are not need to change in another form they can directly get absorbed in the same form which are present in the food children i hope that you understood this fact and remember this fact also another fact is given in the next page of your book that is page number 20 the small intestine is smaller in diameter but 
longer in length that is about 7 meters than the large intestine which is about 1.5 meters. In our elementary canal, as already I have discussed and drawn the diagram, the stomach is going to connect with small intestine and small intestine connected with the large intestine. So their names are given as the small intestine, small here the sense not in the length, small that is in diameter. So the small intestine is more lengthy than the large intestine but the diameter is less. And the length of this small intestine is about 7 meters in human beings. Whereas the large intestine is not having that much length, but the diameter is more than small intestine. And the length is about only 1.5 meters. And because of having more diameter than small intestine, it is known as large intestine. So the small and the large were not given to them as per their length, it's given as per their diameter. Small intestine have small diameter than large intestine and large intestine have large diameter, more diameter than small intestine. Now one more fact is given there. Sometimes food chunk make it into the trachea instead of the food pipe leading to a bout of coughing. Sometimes it happens children with us while chewing the food by eating the food that coughing occurs. So the reason is given here as the food is going to pass from mouth to food pipe and at the same place we have one more pipe that is wind pipe or trachea. So the both pipe have the common opening and the food sometimes while moving towards the food pipe they goes to the windpipe and we feel cough and when we cough that food comes back and move towards the food pipe. So this coughing is a natural process that occurs at the time when the food is going to move towards the windpipe. So to remove them the coughing is occur. Now, this is nature's way of removing the food chunk from the trachea. If this does not remove the food, the person can choke. A method called hemorrhage manual can stop the person from choking. It consists of giving a sudden thrust to the abdomen just below the rib cage. So this is the natural way of removal of the chunk of food from trachea. But if a person, if this chunk is not going to remove, so another method is suggested here. If we are going to give a thrust in the rib cage of that person, so the choking of the food can be removed there. And the thrust forces air out of the person's lungs and blows the food from the trachea. And while thirsting them, pushing them, that food which is stored in the trachea, that air pass will come with a force from lung and that highly forced air from the lung will remove that food from the trachea. However, the manual should be learned properly since it can be dangerous if wrongly applied and can even break the ribs. But the person who is going to take this action he must be well trained. Otherwise, there is a possibility of breakdown of ribs. So, if you are going to have this process of thirsting the ribs of a person who have choked trachea, so you must have well trained. Otherwise, you must have to visit any doctor. Children, these are the topics which are given in the book. Now, at last today, I am going to once again revise the overall topic of the chapter which we have explained. So, in the starting, I have to explain to you that the process of nutrition in the animals completes in five steps. That first one, ingestion. Second one, digestion. Third one, 
absorption, fourth assimilation and fifth ejection. These are the five processes which involve in nutrition. Ingestion, taking in the food in body is ingestion. Either by using your fingers or by the body wall or by the tentacles or by the tongue. So the different ways are there in different animals used for ingestion of food. After that, the important process of the nutrition is digestion. Because here the food is going to break from complex to simple form. The food which is ingested, the components of that food is need to break because those components are not utilized by the body in the same form. They need to convert into simpler form. And this conversion of complex form to simpler form of components of food is known as digestion. And this digestion is going to start just after ingestion of the food. In the process of digestion, different digestive juices play important role to digest the different components of our food. Like in case of amoeba, the digestive juice which are present in the body of amoeba is responsible to digest that food vacuole. In case of hydra, that digestive juice, it is present in the mouth. They are going to digest the body of food, just like that in all the animals. In human beings also, the digestive juice, which are present in different parts of our digestive system, like salivary gland, saliva is also a kind of digestive juice. In our stomach, a digestive juice is present, pancreas, gallbladder, small intestine. So these all are the parts of our digestive system in which different digestive juices are going to secrete and they are responsible for digestion of different components of food. Now after that digestion of different components of food, the food is going to absorb. That digested food need to absorb by the body tissues. So in unicellular animal like amoeba, that digested food directly get absorbed by the body fluid. But in human beings, this absorption takes place by the blood. As the food passes in small intestine, so the wall of small intestine have number of finger-like projections which are known as villi, and these villi increases the surface area. And while increasing the surface area, all the digested food get absorbed by the blood capillaries which are present in all villages in our small intestine. And the excess water get absorbed in large intestine. So these all digested food get absorbed and the process is known as absorption. After the absorption, that food reaches to our body tissues and there they get utilized produce energy and this process is known as assimilation. So in assimilation, the digested food get combined with oxygen and produce the energy. Along with that, carbon dioxide and water also produce in human beings. And after the assimilation, in the large intestine, the food which is left which is not digested. So all excess water get absorbed and now the food becomes solid in form and that solid food get collected into the rectum and from the rectum it get removed out through an opening that is anus. So the rectum and anus are responsible for removal of the undigested food. So these two parts of the 
digestive system or the alimentary canal are going to play the role in digestion of food so these all are the processes which are involved in nutrition and especially in human beings these all processes we have explained in detail and at last today i have explained you about the ruminants the ruminants are the group of animals like cows buffaloes sheep goat bison etc these ruminants have four chambered stomach and their process of digestion is somewhat complex as compared to human the food enters through mouth and from food pipe it goes to first chamber of the stomach which is known as rumen in this first chamber that is rumen the food get partially digested and move to the second chamber and again from second chamber that partially digested food which is known as cud comes back into the mouth and again get chewed properly and move back to the third chamber and then fourth chamber and then passes to the small intestine so because of having this process of rumination that is partially digested food again get chewed in the mouth so this process is known as rumination the names of these animals are given as ruminants so these are the topics which we have explained in this chapter and i hope that you understood about these all thank you hand up have a nice day